Hi guys, it's Saturday the 20th of May 2017. You join me here in my tiny little tackle shed so I'm prepping all my gear. It's like a lot of you guys, I'm heading down for my weekly holiday down in France. Now this year we've chosen a venue that I've been to before. It's a lake called Labyrinth. It's down just below Paris. Nice and easy to get to. It's quite a big lake. It's got some snags, it's got weeds, it's got some lovely features, but more importantly it's got some amazing carp. So what I thought I'd do is take the camera with me, try and show you some of the rigs and techniques we use when we're going to be there. You'll get to meet some of the guys that I go fishing with and hopefully we'll grab a chat with John the Bailiff so he can give you a few tips and hints about how to go about fishing the venue. The weather here today is awful, let's hope it's a bit better down in France. See you down there. Love you, babe. Love you. See you next time. Right, good evening guys, it's Sunday, the first night of the trip here at Labyrinth. Finally got set up in a swim known as the Hoggles. Uh, there's a lovely wind creeping down, it's been really hot recently. We're all knackered after travelling here, like you are on these trips abroad. I've managed to get the rods out in some pretty good spots. And in that bay that you're looking at, I have seen some absolute units. Loads of fish in there under the trees, sunning themselves. Really good sign, the wind's creeping in here lovely. Just show you round the swim. It's now looking into the main bowl of the lake. And that swim you can see there on the right of the shot is the beach swim, La Plage, where Peter Cox, owner of Blake's is. He's enjoying some lovely evening sun over there at the moment. I've seen quite a few fish around there too. Yeah, it's looking really good to be fair. Although I'm absolutely knackered, I'm going to stay up tonight for as long as I can because I'm sure they're going to be active at night time. I'm told by the bailiff that the morning is the one. So if I can drag myself out of my pit tomorrow, I'll try and film some crashing or some sort of fishy action. But until then, I'm going to have a brew, sit and admire the scenery, and just enjoy being out on the bank again. Right, it's Monday morning, this is Bernard, and just in time for coming around for a brew, I've gone and got a bite. Let's go and have a little look, see what we got. That looks pretty big. We will get it out and see how big it is. Right, first one of the trip. 
John said to us at the start there was a lot of 49 pounders in here at the moment. Well, he was right. That is a 49 and a half. Caught on double crinella bottom bait. Put out there last night. Saw the fish getting close to it this morning. And uh, this one took it a little while ago. Proper good scrap as well. <laughs> Let's hope there's some more to come. Right, one last little look. First one on the trip. Off you go, son. Make someone else very happy. In the end, where you were, there's a, there's a snake that hangs in the water, yeah. and then as it goes along, comes around the corner, there's another snake that comes yeah. off the corner there. And I baited basically between both snacks and I fished b at both ends of it. Mm -hmm. And these, and um, so they had to come from the snags either way. Yeah, whichever way. Yeah. But he, I, I, when I first went in this room, both fish were fished up the right hand snag. Their habits, but it was just a bit. Oh, hi. It's Louis Partridge, yeah. old school friend, <laughs> camoed right up to the max. To the nines. Got. <laughs> Stevie vaping Houghton. Tell me before you take mine because I've got to bring Vaping them. is the way forward. <laughs> yeah. The legend that is Zach. Brummy Zach. <laughs> so it's Monday afternoon, first full day of the trip. It's red hot now, 26, 27 degrees. All the carp are dotted around the margins, underneath the snags, sunning themselves. And absolutely nothing is happening. So what I thought I'd do is show you how I go about fishing somewhere like Labyrinth. Give you a few tips and a few pointers. And uh, hopefully you'll learn something from this about how to fish a place if you're going to come here on holiday. So firstly, the lake is very, very snaggy in places. In fact, most swims have snags in front of them or to the side of them. You cannot come into a lake like this with 12 pound line size 10 hook, size 8 hooks, you're going to lose everything you hook unless you're fishing a real open water swim. So what I've done is I've beefed up everything I've got. So I've got a big long length of 45 pound lead core. Uh, I think this one is even 50, I think it's the, the, the cord, a cable. Um, I've got a lead clip with a 4 ounce lead on and that's obviously set to come off incredibly easily so that uh, it's all nice and safe. The hook link is Corda Dark Matter in 30 pound. Now that's incredibly tough braid and we thought it was tough enough but Zach is also fishing with 30 pound braid and he has lost a fish because his braid parted today right in the middle. But I have never ever lost a carp because my hook link has broke with this. I would never use anything less than 30 pound on here because it's hit and hold fishing. The hook on this rig, the one that caught the fish this morning is a size four called a long shank. Super, super sharp, super, super strong. Again, I've never had one open. I wouldn't use anything smaller than a size four. John the Bailiff here uses twos and ones. I can see why. That looked tiny in the fish's mouth this morning, but it did the job. Um, so I've bought fours and twos. I would never use anything less than a four. Hook bait, never go anywhere without our crinella. It's a bit of a running joke now, but you don't really need to ask what I'm using, because if it's summertime, I'll be using crinella. It's caught me some massive fish wherever I've taken it. Um, it's caught the biggest fish out of Marpesh, the, the water just up the road. My um, UKPB, everywhere I go, it's always done me proud and I'll have a bit of a focus on Grenada at some point in the future because it's uh, it's proved to be a bit of a devastating bait really uh, and that's just topped off with a piece of plastic maze simply because it adds a little bit of colour and it stops anything from coming off the hair it just beefs it up in case the little fish are pulling around it a little bit there's no poisson char left in here there's hardly any crayfish I don't think I've ever had a bait in here chewed, um, but there are crayfish in the water, so you do need to sort of think about that. Super, super strong, super, super simple. There is no room for little namby pamby rigs and rings in, in this sort of fishing. It's just everything's got to be beefed up and super strong. 
fish strong and you've got a real good chance of getting them in around these snags. Bear that in mind. So, Tuesday morning, been pretty quiet all around that, it's been red hot, flat calm all night. Lee Haywood's had a couple over in the road here bay. Pete Cox has got on the score sheet with the 42 common. My bite time had sort of been and gone, I was just thinking about reeling in and doing a bit of stalking somewhere. Had to be stood slightly next door looking under a tree. And the same rod that went off before with the 49 has gone off again. Looks like a... Uh, Low 30 mirror. Just gonna have a little look, see what it actually is and what it looks like. And there he is. Another good scrap. Sitting there enjoying the peace and quiet. Let's get him out and have a little sneaky peek. So, it's a nice little mirror, just over 30 pound. Same rod on the Cronella again. Good scrap, not surprising with fins like that. I think it's just, just about to flip. This fish is so, so full of life at the moment. Check out this side. Come on, behave. So strong, so strong these fish. There you go, just over 30. And he's being a bit of a helmet, so. One last look. Let's get him back. Lovely job. Let's get another one. Right, it's Wednesday morning. So this is the third morning of our trip. Just bring you up to speed with what's been happening. Still been pretty quiet. Uh, a few guys are still yet to catch. Louis moved on to the dredger swim. That's his third swim that he's been in. And he caught 37 last night, so that was worth moving for. Steve Houghton down in the climbing tree had a PB of 58 last night. Great big long mirror. So that's an epic result. Well done, Steve. Bernard's moved into a new swim on the riverbank. Um, Zach I haven't spoke to yet, so I'm not too sure. And I think Lee Hayward has caught another one down in the Rodeer Bay. Pretty quiet up this end. I did wake up to a fish crashing out somewhere to my left. And unfortunately last night when it was just chilling down for the evening, I did lose what felt like a real big fish. I hate losing fish. On here it's inevitable, but that was a hook pull in open water, so I was a little bit disappointed. But that's life. Just getting to bite time again on here now, so sort of anything between half eight and sort of 12 o'clock seems to be the time when the fish are creeping back into this bay. So I'm going to do my best to just keep quiet if I can and hopefully, hopefully some more will uh, creep back in here. And hopefully you'll get to see another fish on the bank. Right, well I've got a minute, I'll briefly take you through my setup um, and show you how I'm fishing and why I'm doing it. Firstly, 
braided main line. Somebody showed me the uh, the new quarter sub braid. Well, it's quite a few months back now, and uh, I was super super impressed. Most importantly, because it sinks. A lot of the braids we use these days, neutral buoyancy, with all this scum floating around, it'd be an absolute nightmare. So. I've been using it on all my rods back in England and obviously coming over here I knew I wanted to use it, it's super super strong. I think it comes in 15 and 20. This is actually the 15 pound version. Now that might sound like it's slightly undergunned but I haven't broke it yet. It's incredibly strong stuff. I think it breaks at more than 15 pound. And like I say, it lays nice and low in the water, follows all the contours of the bottom as possible, you know, as best as it possibly can. You'll see I've got snag ears on my alarms. Last year I came here and I didn't have snag ears. Well that very nearly cost me two of my rods because I was trying to fish around a bit of a corner. Two bleeps on the receiver, looked over and my rod had gone. I won't fall into that trap again. Obviously I've got a small drop in the bob in there. That's just to give me any sort of movement. I am fishing up against some sort of, I'm not close to snags but I'm not a million miles away so I want to have a little bit of movement on the bobbin and then everything's pretty much locked down. A good solid butt rest, um, butt rest that's going to grab hold of the rod. There is no room fishing at Labyrinth for having Namby Pamby setups and letting them run. That's just going to lose you a fish every single time. You need to fish super super strong. You need to make sure everything is locked down. You might only get two bites in a week here. You do not want to be losing them because you've let the fish have the upper hand and take you straight into a snag. Fish strong, fish sensible, and you will land some fish. Right, it's Wednesday afternoon. Bit of a lull in the action. Not a lot's really happening. John's come round, he's had a bit of a break from his streaming duties, so I thought we'd catch up with him and ask him a few questions about the lake. So, first of all, how big is Labyrinth and how many people can fish at one time? About 50 acres, it's a bit of a, an odd shape, so it's difficult to work out, but it's about 50 acres. Um, we take up to 15 people a week on here, and there's, uh, there are 22 swims. Um, we don't want to fish and fill them all because it's, it allows people to move around should they need, need to. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good thing about when you come here. I mean, we always come as a group of 10. You can all move, you've all got loads of options, and already in this week we've had loads of guys moving around. There's not many venues you can go to where you've got that option to move. And I think that's a, a major plus point for fishing here. It's so, such an odd shape, you can all get your own little bit of water, isn't it? And what do you think stock-wise, obviously it's quite hard to judge because there were carp in here before you started here, but I know that you've stocked it. How many carp do you think are in here? One of the years we've, uh, we've stocked several, several times, um, I estimate there to be about 700 fish in here at the moment. And a good percentage of them are over 40 pounds, aren't they? I know you keep meticulous records. Uh, it is very impressive how many 40 pounds you are in here. Um, yeah, I collect the photographs of everybody every week of all the fish that are caught, and I check those against the albums. And if they've gone up in the way, I will bring them off. And uh, the current count is 119 fish over 40 pounds that I have photographed of. Now, in years gone past, this was always overshadowed by its sister water up the road, Marpesh. Mm. Do you think that in the end, this one will overtake Marpesh? I think in the fullness of time, this will eclipse all these waters around here. Yep, I'm going to agree with that. After I've, I've obviously known about it for about five years, and the way they've grown in the last five years, if they do the same again for another five years, it's going to be pretty immense. Now. Obviously I've been here a couple of times, I'd like to think I know how to fish it, but if somebody was watching this that had never been here before, what do you say to most people that come here for the first time? You know, what are the what are the problems you see, what are the mistakes that people make the very first time they come? Um, firstly, I think that the biggest thing is that uh, people underestimate it. Um, it's a gravel pit, so it's quite a harsh environment. Um, lots of plateaus and bars, there's weed, there's snags, uh, there's at least half a dozen different types of mussels in here, clams, snails, all sorts of stuff. Um, you've got to use tackle that's going to deal with all of that. Um, what <laughs> We were laughing earlier but you say people turn up here with like size 10 hooks and 12 pound mono, well that's yeah. just not going to cut it is it? You ain't landing a bream here with that. 
So there you go. Not that there are very many bream. <laughs> yeah. So you've heard it from the horse's mouth. It's like I've been saying before, if you come here for the first time, do your own work, make sure you beef up your gear, don't come here with 12 pound line and tiny little hooks. Bring plenty of bait, they do like their food. Fish strong, fish safe. Yeah, I, I use, uh, uh, generally, I, uh, I use 30 pound whiplash um, mainline braid. Um, and I'm usually attaching that to a size two. <laughs> now people will be watching this and laughing because you've just said you use a size two hook. But the fish have got massive gobs and you're trying to pull them away from snags so I don't you know dispute that one little bit that is definitely the way to go just bear that in mind if you come like I say some of the guys here they're all experienced guys they've already turned up and they've already gone up two hook sizes because they've realized within one bite that they're in big trouble if you come here undergunned yeah it's um, the hard fighting fish it's quite a big late lake they're fit fish they swim around a lot they have the fit um, you aren't just winding them in some of the uh, especially the mid 40 upper 40 common they will try their very, very best to pull you in. Yeah. Yeah, we, we keep hearing people saying that, um, there's a fish just jumped, keep he um, hearing people say that they've been attached to a catfish. Well, trust me, you haven't been attached to a catfish. You've been attached, like you said, a 40 pound common. And, uh, oh, they've got nuts. Yeah, and you know, if, you, if you're fishing around snags, you've got every chance you're gonna lose them. So, uh, you know, we're trying to jump into your head that this isn't a place to come Perhaps if you're a beginner to carp fishing or you've never been abroad before, maybe this isn't the best place to come. Um, and if you are going to come here for the first time, like I say, do your homework and come with somebody that knows how to fish it. You've all got access to boats. Um, and I think that's a really good thing to have here because without them, you'd, you'd be, you know, you'd be stuck a few times, wouldn't you? You can go out and you can get fish out of the weed and out of the snags. There are some swims where you don't really need a boat. Um, but if you're fishing the main body of the lake in the open water, um, I think it's a massive advantage. Uh, I would always use one in the main, main body of the lake. Um, like I said, there's so, so many features and, and, and weed, etc., to get around. Um, it helps you out so much. And lastly, I suppose, if you're going to come to somewhere like this, make sure you bring an unhooking mat and a waist sling big enough to deal with a 75 pound carp. Well, the late record, as I have said on uh, on uh, Facebook recently, he was 75 pounds. And as an old fella said to me years and years and years ago, if you don't tackle up in order to catch the biggest fish in the pond, how the hell do you ever expect to catch it? There you go, and that's a good place to win. Thanks very much, John. Pleasure. It's uh, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Just watching a movie. Left hand rod on a new spot. Absolutely met with what a fight, and uh, the result was this very, very lively, very, very lively 46 pound mirror. It's well lively, so I'll just have a quick look. There you go, 46 once again on the Crinella. Just turn him around. Oh, these fish are so strong. So strong. Yeah, what a fight. Lovely little spot right in the edge. Lovely fish, pristine. There you go. Let's get another. Uh, here we are in Redwood Swim with good friend Matt Pointer and good friend Zach and a bit of an interesting note it's been quite a quiet night everyone's been getting the odd bleep and the odd pull but nothing's really materialised apart from my 46 and another small one but interestingly I've just come around to see these guys who've been and looked at their spots with an aquascope and what did you find? Absolutely nothing, nothing bar a hook bait completely cleaned out on both spots. And Zach, what about you? All three spots that are underneath the snags that I can physically see, absolutely not a crumb left. So there you go. We all think that we're fishing superbly effective. Yeah. And obviously we're very limited on what we can and can't fish with because we're fishing sort of near snags. But those short bleeps and pulls we're getting, we just dismiss as all sorts of liners. All that food we put out, not a scrap 
is left? Nothing what? left at all. That's particles, uh, hemp, maize, crushed boilers, chopped boilers, a few oils. And it's well, I'm confident that if my hook bait gets picked up, it's nailed. Mate. Yeah, same as. The rig, it just doesn't work that way. If it's picked up, it will find the hook If it's hole. going in, it's going in. And, and all your baits are coming back intact as well, aren't they? And they're yeah. not covered in weed, everything's clean. It's not like anything's chewing your hook bait. Everything is intact. Everything come back as clean as a whistle. <laughs> it's just no food out. left around where you're fishing. It's the only thing left in there. Oh dear. Time for a little technical rethink tonight. Definitely time for a rethink, yeah. Something different. Toodle pip! Right, check out all this fluff. <laughs> check out all of this fluff. It almost looks like it's snowed, but it's the fluff off these trees and it gets in everything. Your eyes, your face, all of your tackle box. I'm going to be getting this fluff out of my stuff for the next six months. It almost looks like it's snowing in May. That looks hot in here in the evenings, Pete. Oh, mate. <laughs> it's bad. You can sit around the corner there. Yeah. You know. Good afternoon, it's Thursday. It's blisteringly hot. And we're in the sunniest swim ever, so everyone's reeled in. Probably going to go and have a look at another little lake down the road. But before we do that, I thought we'd have a little catch up with owner of Blake's Baits, Peter Cox. Pete, welcome to the camera. I know this is the first time you've been sat in front of it. Thank you very much. What do you think of Labyrinth so far? It's a beautiful place, um, lots of features, good swims, um, tricky water, not a place to come expecting to get loads of runs no. and that sort of thing. Uh, and their fish are pretty clued up and there's some good lumps to go at. And what have you caught so far? Uh, so far I've had a uh, common at 42 and a mirror uh, at 29 and had two two runs which I'd lost fish to snags. I mean that's inevitable here isn't it it's every swim has got some sort of hazard um, and unfortunately you have to fish past them sometimes and even if you manage to get them past them snags there's still wee beds and stuff you can lose them in anyway so yeah you have to make sure you come with plenty of spare kit um, to sort of retackle up again because it's pretty inevitable you're gonna lose something at some point. Absolutely um, it's worth listening to uh, the bailiff and reading the website because uh, you want to come here well tooled up with some decent gear on um, because pretty much every swim has snags the fish love to get in the snags yeah and they obviously feel confident and safe there yeah um, but uh, even if you're not fishing directly by the snag you can always pick up a fish and get into a bloody snag so it's not good yeah Okay, let's get round to bait. We, you know, we are a bait company. Let's talk about bait. You've obviously got access to every single bait that we sell. Mm -hmm. What baits have you brought and why? Um, I bought two of our uh, our, our brands. Uh, bought Cronella. Good um, old Cronella. Essentially, uh, fish meal, and I've also bought Snowberry with me. Even though designed as a, a winter bait, um, I like to have two different combinations it's completely different than any of the fish meals that other people are using here um, and that's what I took the, the mirror on this morning so there you go you know it just everyone's got their own idea about bait Pete decided to bring a white bright white winter bait which we all use from about November onwards but ironically when we fished Marpesh a couple of years ago you took the same two baits and you did really, really well, didn't you? Sort of 50-50 on both baits. You caught the big one on Cronella. That's it. But yeah. that water's incredibly pressured. It's a very, very tricky water. And that bright white bait in the middle of summer, when it was still really warm, did you really well, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's something different. People probably are sticking with the fish meals. But uh, if you've got the flexibility, it's, it's worth trying the option. Yeah. You know, it can work for you. And like you say, at Marpesh, um, 
I think it took me two of the fish I had out of the five then, um, which, yeah, well pleased with. We'll just focus a little bit on the crinella, because obviously I find it hard to use anything but crinella these days. Mm -hmm. It's done so well. When we go back over the last three or four years it's been available, there has been some massive carp caught on it now, isn't it? It's actually yeah. starting to make me think what is sort of special about it. I know people say certain baits, you know, they're better than others, but the track record it's got with big fish seems a little bit uncanny, doesn't it? It does, very much so. Um, you know, we've both experienced uh, fishing in France, catching big lumps, um, we've both and also caught, in we've the both UK. Caught, we've both caught the Marpes fish, haven't we? Two yeah. years running on the same bait. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, that seems a little bit odd. Obviously, they do like it. Yeah. What, what do you think it is about that bait that maybe makes it stand out from some of the others? What do you think the key aspect of the bait is? I think possibly the um, liquid attractors that go in it. Plus the fact I love the combination of having the, uh, the the natural sea snails in there. Yeah. I think that gives you you've got an, obviously got crunch, but you've also got saltiness and calcium. Exactly. John was talking about calcium. He said that certain fish in here um, seem to come on certain baits, and he's a big believer that commons specifically need more calcium in their diet because they have more scales and they need more calcium to reproduce the damaged scales. And them snails are full of calcium, hmm. so maybe that's another little aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, I think it does does pretty well. It's, it's a reasonably natural colour um, and very soft. As baits go. Um, some people don't like a soft bait, but I can never understand why you wouldn't want a soft bait because it, the more you boil something, the more you take away all of its goodness. Very much and so. And it is a very soft bait, isn't it? But the fish yeah. seem to love it. Yeah, and obviously you get a hard skin on the outside. All the goodness you put inside takes a lot longer to come out. Yeah. So you're getting, you know, pretty much as soon as you get that bait in the water, it's starting to, to work for you. Um, did you bring any particles or any ground baits or pellets or anything different on this trip or did you go down the boilie route? Um, this time I very bought just a few particles. I bought um, a bit of uh, large seed, what we sell in Blake's as our spod mix. Um, just got a much larger seed, about 12 different seeds in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just bought some hemp as well. Um, but Good old I hemp. haven't gone mad with it. Um, I pretty much uh, just put out a scattering along with the boilie. Yeah, obviously it's trying, you know, good thing about particles is it buys you a bit of time. It tends to hold the fish in the swim a little bit longer. It's a bit ironic because today I've just been around and spoke to all the guys and the guys that can see their spots have all been out today after a night of hardly any action and all of their bait is gone apart from their hook bait which is sitting proudly in the middle. And that's got us all scratching our heads. We're clearly all getting done. We're all on fish. We're seeing fish all around the entire lake, which is a good thing about this lake. But you're only picking off the odd one. And that tells me these fish are pretty smart. Very much so, yeah. I was probably the luckiest man on the lake with three runs, unfortunately, only managing to bank one of them, but... There you, you know. go. So we're gonna have a bit of a barbecue this afternoon, chill out for a few hours. And then this evening, when it gets near a bite time, the rods will be going back out and have another little go. See, when we're not actually catching anything, <coughs> we listen to drum and bass, don't we, Louis? We love it. It's <laughs> Bernard, he likes a bit of drum and bass. Pete, do you like drum and bass? Love it, <laughs> Can't be a bit of drum and bass. <laughs> <laughs> Every night, just try and cool off a little bit. Really? Just too hot. So, what lakes do I know around there? Is this all video, Gab? Yeah, everyone's having a little. It's not a joint we're smoking. This is the barbecue smoke you can see. That's a big joint, really. It is. He's a big lad. It's a ten chair. Yeah. Yeah. What? Sausage. Once again, Matthew is in charge of catering. Standard procedure for me and the barbecue. We've got some more help with uh, Simon Gascoigne there, who seems to come tooled up with pretty much every utensil you can imagine. Where? Pretty good. That's Wellington. Oh, Wellington. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, very early morning guys, uh, it's Saturday today so we've got one more day, just had one hell of a battle down all the snags, didn't think it was a very big fish at first, felt a little bit tap tap, a little bit jaggy and really heavy, took me for every snag it could, thank god for the braid is all I can say, it's turned out to be a real big old warrior, 56 pounds, Looks like I've caught an old fish, but what an absolute lump. <laughs> Check out that old dinosaur. He's going to flip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 56 pounder. Right down a sneaky little margin shallow spot. I've been seeing this one around quite a lot. I didn't think it was this big. I thought it was an upper 40. Notice this old grey old lady. Head like a buffalo. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's going to flap again. Yeah, lovely old fish. Great big tail. Maze to get that in. That was such an epic scrap. All right, go. All right. We're nearly done. We're nearly done. One more quick look. There you go, 56 pound. Let's get her back. very interesting fishing at Labyrinth and it always amazes me how far these fish will travel in an average day. Just yesterday Steve and Louie were stalking down the channel which you're sort of looking across to right now but it's a long long way down and at about three o'clock they were watching the one and only koi in the lake. White koi I've been watching it all week myself. Well, they got a bit bored down there and reeled in. I came back from the shops, came round here with John, looked under the bush to my left, so the furthest point away, and there was the koi, just turning up to lay underneath the bush. It travelled all that way in just a matter of minutes. And this morning, just like every morning this week, but more so this morning, the fish are all showing like mad and they're showing down towards the dead man's channel there's one just showing in the middle in front of bernard i don't know if you'll be able to see that or not bernard's on the riverbank on his own and he's not using a boat and i don't blame him he's just been sticking out boilers with a throwing stick he was adamant he didn't want to use a boat and it's paid off because yesterday he had a 40 he's had a 30 as well and the fish tend to show every morning around the same time just in front of him and I have a sneaky feeling he's going to get another one this morning because the fish are right on him and Darren's moved down to the dead man swim which you're looking across to but you probably can't see he's in the mouth of a little narrow channel and this morning they have been all over him all over his left hand side coming out of that bay and going back in crashing real close to him not sure if he's awake or not yet but I've seen some massive carp showing over there and my bay to my left looks absolutely void of carp which is quite common this time of the morning they tend to creep back in here from about one o'clock onwards so that's worth bearing in mind if you come 
to Labyrinth in May. The fish are definitely feeding out in the open part of the lake. They definitely group up in all of the bays and all the corners in the day, sit underneath the snags, they've all got their favourite little places. I've definitely seen the 56 that I caught last night swimming around underneath this bay on several occasions. And then every night and every morning they are out in that main bowl of that lake. Now I don't know if that's just because of the time of the year or there's loads of natural food out there but there's none of our lads have been right out there and dropped any bait out there. There's nothing to hold them out there so they're going out there on their own under their own steam. And I can almost guarantee they'll keep showing till about 10 or 11 o'clock maybe even 12 o'clock and then all of a sudden they'll appear all around the edge again and that'll be it for another day. But they're certainly not afraid to show. So, seeing as it's the last full day today, this labyrinth trip is Sunday to Sunday, and today is Saturday, so time to start tidying up all my stuff. But after watching the recent chain of events and all the fish crashing this morning, and knowing that Bernard was going to get a bite, he's just got a netted one. Not sure how big it is. I actually saw a couple of fish show in front of me, but on a spot where I know it's weedy and I haven't had a rod anywhere near it so I have deployed rod number four good old faithful and I did a crafty little trick rather than rowing out there right over them I rode underneath those power lines and I flicked it the last 30 yards with a little light lead and a choddy and I don't really want to be fishing a choddy on here I'm tussling with these big fish on a choddy but as I'm cast into infinity and beyond into the unknown, it's quite often a very good choice. Little 12mm Anity Dream power lifter on the end. And I'm going to leave it out there until the afternoon and just see if it does anything. Just a, literally a single hook bait out there. Sometimes one is all you need. Right, I just thought I'd show you what I've been doing with my bait. Uh, it's real simple to be honest. Basically, I've got a couple of different sizes of bait. I never ever go anywhere with just the same size of bait. Especially when you're using a boat, you can go out there and you can put whatever size baits you want out. And in here, there's not many bream or tench or anything that are going to eat small baits. Now, some venues you go to, you couldn't do that because you'd just be feeding the bream. It'd be a waste of time. You'd have to go right with donkey chokers. But here, that's not so much of a problem. So to be different, I brought various different sizes. So I've got some 20 mil crinella. And some 12mm crinella. There's already some 15s in there. There you can see them all in there. Got a matching bait glug. Now I spent a lot of time and effort playing around with different liquids to use as an actual bait glug. Not like a boily dip, but I mean a proper bait glug to coat your baits in. And there's quite a few different liquids and fish proteins that you can use. This one instantly jumped out to me and uh, we bite in big quantities and it's brilliant because it can't be overdone. You can't overcoat your baits because it's like a natural hydrolyzed fish protein. If there is such a thing, it's a natural one. You can't overdo it. And when we've thrown it into the edge, the fish go absolutely mad for it. Add a little bit of flavor in to make it match the crinella and you're onto an absolute winner. So let's give it a little glug of that not be shy with it and just to keep it different from everyone else I'm going for a little tiny splash and anchovy extracts really love this stuff smells lush again fish seem to really like it a little tiny bit of that I need to go mad with that one let's give it all a good stir Right, you can see them there, all nice and coated. They've just come out of the freezer, so they're still rock hard at the moment. They're now about to start thawing out. They're gonna draw in that liquid, be absolutely full of attraction. And uh, if you ever watch fish over this, 
if they're swimming around up in the water, these liquids do make a difference because I've seen the fish eight, ten feet above them before, suddenly they can pick up on these liquids, drop down, start feeding. It definitely, definitely helps. I don't use it all the time, certain times, but especially when the water is warm. Well worth a go. Good evening guys, it's the end of the session for me. It's been quite a frustrating week this week. Uh, I've got a group of 10 of us on here and some of these guys are well experienced um, and they found it real hard going this week. The weather has been awful for carp fishing. It's been sky high pressure, flat calm and obviously boiling hot. It's still 30 degrees today. It's nine o'clock at night and it's still 30 degrees. So that's what we've had to deal with. Um, but the fish haven't spawned yet, so that's a major positive for this week. There is fish out there feeding, because I've just seen a few start to crash out again, and I can guarantee they'll be crashing out tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. There's still chance for a few bites for a few of us, so I'm sure we're all going to be trying right to the bitter end. And that's quite an important note. Never ever give up. I've saved many and many a session by catching one on the last morning as I'm packing up. So, you're here for a week fish for the week if you can just thought I'd give you a little brief insight into the spots I've been fishing this week it's very easy to boat around this lake and find some spots that are obviously very blatant and easy to fish but some of the spots I've seen are really dangerous and I would never ever put a rig down myself um, you know I think that's some pretty desperate angling to, to fish next to some of these snags but people clearly have so what I'd say to you if you're coming here for your first time, have a boat round. If you can find some real big snags that are a good distance apart, don't bait and fish right next to them in the hope they're just gonna come out of the snags and find your bait. Maybe find some ground in the middle and away from the snags in slightly deeper water because these fish are just sitting up under the snags. and They're not there to feed, they're just sitting there chilling out in the midday sun. And clearly when darkness comes or the morning comes, they're out feeding. So you don't really need to fish right by them snags. Try and fish somewhere safely adjacent to it. The depth of the spot seems to be fairly important. Um, a lot of the lake is 12, 13 foot and there's shelves that drop down sort of from three, four foot right down to that 12, 13 feet. I've done quite well on my left hand rod which is up a margin in front of another peg. And it's very shallow, it's five and a half to six feet there and there's a nice snaggy bush just past it, so I'm well short of that. And uh, it's clearly a good spot because it is quite shallow. Saying that, I've also caught out in 13 foot of water. Um, again, it's quite an obvious spot. But I've blanked for quite a few nights in between when I know there's been fish there, so I haven't been getting it quite right on there. I'm not afraid to admit that you know, we don't always get it right. Don't be afraid to chop and change. I'm generally an advocate of sticking out. Once I know something's right, I'll generally stick with it. But this week, I've done well by changing my spots. It's almost as if you can get a bite from a spot and then they suss you out. Something to bear in mind. Uh, and they have been clever around rigs this week. There's no doubt in my mind that I've been picked up and put down a lot. All the guys that can see their spots, they've been cleaned out time after time. And that's all around the lake, all different setups, heavy leads, short rigs, everything. They can deal with it. But we are still catching a few. So Labyrinth, to sum it up, brilliant venue. One of the best I've been to. Very well run. Amazing stock of fish. They're only getting bigger. I'll be trying to come here as often as possible. John the Bailiff, he's been dead good. He's helped out the guys. He's put them on all the spots that he knows. He's really trying to get these guys to catch a few fish and myself as well. So if you're looking for a venue in the future and you think you can take it on, come and have a look at Labyrinth, just below Paris, three and a half hours from Calais. Well worth a trip and good luck. Right, last chance saloon. And uh, my most productive rod yet again has gone off. This is a lovely old carp, this is. You probably won't be able to see this, but it's covered in these little tiny starburst scales. It's got some big old scales on it. What a lovely looking carp this is. It's beauty. 46 pound. 
bit of a more easy fight this one. That's a lovely old carp. Big old chunky head. Played the game nicely. Crinella snowman yet again. Really enjoyed this trip. Shame I've got to go home really, but I'm gonna have, to have one more before I go. 46 pound. It's warm, so let's get it back. Well, hello again. So, just put the 40, whatever it was, back. Tied on a fresh bait. Pushed the boat out with me in it to go and row it back out. Got four pumps out. This rod went off. And uh, didn't think it was very big at all. Came in like a bit of a passy after I got it round for some weed. And a dirty, great big 48 pounder popped up. So, uh, this one's definitely ready to spawn. Big fat lady. There you have it. Seconds later, another 48. Happy days, I'll show you the other side. I'm getting too old for this. It's so hot today. All we've done is drink water and sit in the shade. Clearly they want to feed. Give us one last go before we leave in a couple of hours. Yes, I've had quite a good trip. There you go. 48 pound. Lovely job. Right, let's try and get some rods back out. <laughs> so Louis, would you did you enjoy your trip no, to Come on <laughs> Simon, did you enjoy your trip? Yeah, love it. Brilliant. Yeah. Come again? Yes. Darren? Yeah. I know you really want to be famous, Darren. <laughs> Lovely time, mate. Yeah. I had a big chunk last night, not quite a PB, but <laughs> probably 35 less than I thought. <laughs> but it was a 15, mate. Mate, well done, that's top respect. What about you, Bernie? Alone on the riverbank over yeah. there, do you enjoy it? Yes, thanks. Come back again? Yep. It's got man top hanging. John, would you come back again? Oh no, sorry, you live here, sorry. <laughs> Pete, what about you? How many did you have in the end? I had three in the end, lost two. Um, I would come back again, but I must remember my sun cream in that swim next time. Or we'll come in December when it's freezing, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Freezing. <laughs> Woods in the way, mate. <laughs> Here's the local sex pests, <laughs> aka the Hungarian flasher. Um, did did you enjoy your trip, first trip to Labyrinth? Awesome. Yeah, would you come again? Definitely. What did you have in the end? Um, four. Up four to? Four. Yeah, that's a good result. Pardon, you struggled a little bit this week, but you tried pretty hard and moved, so yeah. did you enjoy your trip? Oh yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Good nice break. Definitely and up for coming again. Yeah, looking forward to the next time round. There you go then boys. 2017, Labyrinth, done.